Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. If this is your first time here, please go down and click subscribe and that little bell notification icon. If you're returning and you're not getting notifications, click that little notification bell too. I want to thank you all for being here. I do appreciate each and every one of you. If you need IT consulting, you can head over to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. If we can't help you, we'll get you to someone who can. Now, what we are going to talk about today is this little bad boy. And this is the Grandstream GWN 7602 access point. Now, it is currently in beta. And I have to let you know that it is in beta. I'm going to give you a close-up of this device here in a second. Um, it will, uh, you can power it over PoE. It does have a PoE input. Um, it, it can also output PoE, but you can also power it with a uh, power brick. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a close-up on this. You can see all the ports. So over here we've got power, we've got reset, we've got PoE in, we've got LAN 1, LAN 2, and LAN 3. The PoE out is uh, not labeled. And then it does have some mounting options here, but then Grandstream will be releasing, uh, it will be releasing a security mount for this because this is meant for hotels, MDUs, things like that. So it's not really that much bigger than other devices that we deal with. So here is, I don't have a banana, but I do have some Burt's Bees. Uh, I'll open the Burt's Bees. We'll make this official. By the way, this is not endorsed by Burt's Bees, but Grandstream did send me the AP for beta testing. Here is the tube of Burt's Bees, and there is the access point. So it's a little dude. Now, right now, uh, you cannot manage this device in a standalone capacity. You have to either join this to a 7600 uh, series master access point, or you can adopt it on the GWN.cloud, <clears throat> Or I have a video coming up on the 17th of January. They released the GWN Manager, which is the on-premise version of their network controller, which is super duper exciting. So real quick, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this fired up, and then we're going to hop over into GWN.cloud so we can take a look at the uh, configuration options that we have for this. Stay tuned. All right, so the device is booting up. Um... The on-prem GWN manager is super exciting. We're also supposed to be getting the Grandstream device manager, which you're going to see when I start rolling out the phone videos. I've got almost one of every Grandstream phone here, and I'm going to start doing the videos on those so that you are familiar with the Grandstream phone line. Uh, so those products are both supposed to be coming Q1 this year. It's super duper exciting having an on-prem controller. And I'll tell you, uh, I'm not going to spoil it because I'm going to do a whole installation video. It came out on the 17th. I grabbed it on the 18th and had it running uh, yesterday. And uh, I've got it going. Not quite ready to do a full-blown video on it yet, but uh, it runs, for those of you that hate uh, the architecture of some of the other controllers, this is its a little bit different as in there's no... There's no Mongo, there's no, it is uh, Maria, which uh, is a fork of another uh, database. So, um, good stuff. Uh, all right, so here we are at our GWN uh, dashboard. And our access point must still be booting up. All right, let's see. What we got going on here? Okay. So, as always, Willie just being impatient, the access point is now uh, booted up. You can see we've got one access point on our GWN cloud. And what we can do is we can come down here to configuration. Now, GWN.cloud, I'm going to do a whole video series on this, but I'm going to do it with the on prem controller. So just know that this is coming and uh, 
because this controller is extremely powerful with the things that, and it also has an API. So Tim is already hard at work digging through that API, trying to see what the heck is going on under the hood. In the short, in the short run, just know that when you see SSIDs, clients, captive portal control, access control, all these things do exist. Go out, it's free. Get you a GWN.cloud account and check it out. Uh, Two-factor authentication is is uh, coming soon. It's already in the on-prem version. They are rolling it to the online version so that we can protect all of the things that we love with two-factor authentication. But anyway, back to this. So here's our GWN7602. So if we go to configure here, here we can change the device name. We can give it a static IP address. It does have band steering on it, but we have it disabled. Now you can see we've got 2G, 5G, or balanced. There is no custom options. Those are the three options we get. Now for LAN 1, 2, and 3, what we're going to get is on this screen, we can set the VLAN for each one of those ports. What I'm hoping will happen is that we can have multiple ports and we'll be able to trunk uh, out of those ports. We'll see, we'll see what happens with that. All right, so for our 2.4 gigahertz, you have to remember this is all, this device is beta. So this is subject to change at any time until it's released. And as long as you know it's beta, you're in good shape. All right, so for 2.4 gigahertz, we have the 802.11 uh, in mode. It's got B and G. Stay away from B and G unless you absolutely have to. Uh, N is the mode we should be running in 2.4 gigahertz unless something else necessitates it. We've got a channel width of 20 megahertz with a channel of auto, and we'll probably uh, set these. By default, the enable short guard interval is enabled. We've got for the active spatial streams, we can do auto one or two. Radio power is set to high. And here's that allow legacy 802.11b devices. And my suggestion to you is, unless a manufacturer of a device that you have has told you to enable that, do not enable it because it affects the performance of your entire wireless network. All right, under five gigahertz, the mode that we have is AC, channel width is set at 80, but we do have the 20 and 40 megahertz options. Channel is auto, enable short, guard interval is selected by default. We've got our uh, spatial streams here, auto one or two, and radio power. So pretty nice little configuration. You gotta remember that a lot of the other configuration stuff is buried in the controller, such as the SSIDs, captive portal, firewalling, all of that good stuff. That's gonna be other options in the um, controller. So what we're going to do is when I start uh, deploying, I need to test the PoE out. So when I start doing the videos here uh, in the next week or so of the Grandstream phones, I'm actually going to power the phones using this access point and we'll see, we'll see how that works out. Like I said, devices in beta. So I'm really super excited about this device and I can't wait to get my hands on the security device to mount this in like a hotel room. So the way that I could see me using this device and let me grab the device again real quick. So what I'm wondering on this, so I've got PoE in, I wonder if LAN one, I'm going to have to go back to the, uh, the data sheet on this. Um, but I'm wondering if LAN one is my PoE out. I'm just going to have to test it. I've done all kinds of software testing on this. Uh, I've run all kinds of uh, software attacks against it to try to break the firmware, try to make it malfunction, all that good stuff. But how I could see, see this working for me is we'd have a trunk port coming in on our PoE port delivering you know, two or three different VLANs. Then P, uh, LAN 1, since that's blue, if that's PoE, I'm going to send that out to a phone. And then like LAN 2, I may go to a set-top box on the TV. And then LAN 3, I could end up going to the customer, like having a, an actual Ethernet port for the customer to plug in. And then I can have uh, multiple SSIDs on this. So if I've got in-room smart devices that need to connect back to the controller, we could have that in here as well. So I'm super excited about this. I'm gonna thank Grandstream for letting me participate in the beta stage. And uh, we've already got a client in, in South Dakota who uh, is very excited about deploying these in their, um, in their hotel. So I can't wait to get that project started. 
But if you want to know more about this AP or more about the Grand Stream line of access points, make sure you reach out at willyhow.com. If you need IT consulting, reach out to fill out that contact form. We'll be in touch. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment, share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you do need that consulting, the contact forms at willyhow.com. If you'd like to support the channel by becoming a patron on Patreon, and thank you to those folks, that link is down below. And as always, all of our affiliate links are down below and marked as such. They don't change your price, but they do kick a couple bucks to the channel. And don't feel pressured to use those, but it is appreciated when you do. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.